Good afternoon, everybody. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed for Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. The title of this episode is Live by the Blockchain, Die by the Blockchain. Join Paul Gordon as he covers blockchain salvation, blockchain poison pill, Germany woos UK, Gun grab fail in Virginia, gun freedom, D-U-M-B in New Jersey, and more on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And I realize that I uh, I read my introduction here, join Paul Gordon as he covers, which sounds a little weird because I am Paul Gordon. And no, I do not regularly go around talking about myself like I am in the third person. Although every once in a while, I do refer, uh, refer to myself as we, but that is only because I have multiple voices in my head. So it's uh, totally, totally legitimate. If you're new to the show, what we do here is we go over the headlines that you may not have heard in the mainstream medias. And we see how many headlines can we get through in the course of 20 minutes, if you'd like to see links to to read these stories in more detail, and also you will see a lot of links to a lot of stories. As a matter of fact, I think there's there's maybe 40, 40 stories here, and obviously we're not going to get to 40 stories in 20 minutes. You go to isheadlines.com and you can see the, the latest show, which is obviously today. It's Tuesday, January 16th show. You click on that link and you can see all types of stories that we won't even get to within the span of 20 minutes. Now, where do we get the title from for today? Live by the blockchain, die by the blockchain? That's because we're going to start off with two stories. One story in which blockchain is kind of maybe possibly a liberator. And another story that shows that there's something brewing in blockchain topia that is not very favorable to the spreading of liberty. So on that front, let's get ready to do the 20 minutes. Our first headline of the day is how blockchain could save Rahava from economic blockades. But before we get there, I guess we should start the clock. I didn't start the clock. Now I'm going to start the clock. Boom. How blockchain could save Rahava from economic blockades. Could Rahava escape the financial blockade being placed on it by the world? By creating a blockchain bank based on oil, Nick Spanos of Zap.org recently proposed that the Rahavans could follow the model set by Venezuela of building a cryptocurrency based off of its oil. And I will say, don't follow that model exactly, but the, the general idea is what he's talking about here. So Rahavans are already utilizing existing digital currencies more and more, so the shift to a Rahavan digital currency doesn't really seem to be that far-fetched. So here's some more of this possibility from Kurdistan24. So their headline reads, Bitcoin, could it help end Kurdistan's blockade? And I, I expanded it to a more general uh, blockchain theme. Nick Spanos, the co-founder of Zap.org, presented a keynote speech at the Venezuelan Central Bank's inaugural forum on digital currencies and the blockchain. Spanos argues that, like Venezuela, Kurdistan could tokenize oil, that is, automate the creation of an exchangeable unit of value for each barrel it is produced. And I'll go uh, a little forward here. So Kurds hold a long-running distrust of their own archaic financial system, which has improved little in recent decades. In 2013, it was reported that local banks had suffered in, in incidences of corruption and embezzlement. This likely causes pause for some would-be foreign investors. It's enough of an issue that Kurdish officials stated they were determined to rebuild and activate the financial and banking se sector and to rehabilitate them to gain the trust of citizens. And yeah, what better way than uh, to, to utilize the power of the blockchain to maybe build your own. So we'll get to the next story. And this next story is the flip side. And it's really, it's, it's not blockchain itself that is the problem it's uh what people are doing 
in the creation of, uh, of various uh, blockchain-based and supporting technologies. So this headline is Blockchain Patents Gobbled Up by State-Favored Megacorps. And that's my title because I, I try to demystify the headlines and bring them down to the bone level as much as possible. As I've written before, one of the biggest threats to blockchain is the rise of patents. And in this story, I have a link to, that, that, to the story that I wrote about the rise of patents in blockchain. So the patent race has already begun, and the major corporate players mired in and working with the coercive associations that protect their monopolies through thousands of regulations are already grabbing up as many patents related to blockchains as they possibly can. And this story is from IAM. I -A -M. That's, the name. That's the title of the, of the site, which is... I, well, anyway, <laughs> there's a link to it in, in, in the notes here. Their headline is Bank of America and IBM lead on blockchain patents, but startups and other specialists dominate the market. As the fluctuating Bitcoin market has everyone talking, new research has thrown light on which companies are the leading filers of patent related to patents related to blockchain, the technology which underpins the world's best known cryptocurrency, but whose application could extend to multiple different sectors among the leaders of the giant financial institutions, Bank of America, which takes the top spot with 43 patents and Fidelity, which boasts 14 grants. Uh, payment leader MasterCard, joint second with 27, and by far the leading tech player, IBM, another sharing second with 27 patents. And uh, go, skip forward here a little bit. The research shows that for all its promise and the amount of media attention it has received, in patent terms, bl terms, blockchain remains in its very early stages. Okay, yes. And Vision identified a little over 1,000 grants and applications in the U.S. and the universe of IP is relatively small. I would like to keep it that way, but alas, there is an IP war already emerging within blockchain. So the, the more that we can have open source folks do the work to try to... Uh, preemptively strike against the the ip pirates uh the better so there you go that's why the story or this uh episode is titled the way it is this is of course the dark side to blockchain that people will come in and and patent it right out of uh of decentralized planning existence so the next story is Germany has a plan to woo the UK back to the EU. That's right. If you thought that Brexit was a done deal, well, think again. And this story is from Express UK. Scheming Germany plots to reverse Brexit and offer Britain new EU membership terms. Yes, that is a totally skewed and biased uh, headline, and I totally support it because uh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not necessarily for biased headlines when you're trying to write a straight news story. Which by the way on iStateDT.tv, we we're not doing straight news story. We're doing opinion. We're doing it to editorializing, but we're open and honest about it. But anyway, uh German this is from from the Express here. German MEP Hans Olaf Henkel attempted to bend Mr. Juncker's ear and convince him to offer Britain a new EU membership deal that hands more sovereignty to the UK Parliament. In particular, he believes Britain should gain the controls over immigra immigration initially demanded by David Cameron when he tried to renegotiate terms in 2015-16. He hopes this would change Brits' minds about leaving the EU and prevent a, slip in, a, a split in the bloc. Uh, I'll go forward a little bit here. He planned to remind Mr. Juncker Britain is the largest single customer of the remaining 27 EU countries, importing much more than exporting to the continental EU countries. Mr. Mr. Henkel said, although many EU leaders believe Brexit will cause problems for Britain while leaving their countries unscathed, complex international business relationships will suffer. Okay, so there you have it. Germany is working to to bring Britain back into the EU fold. I and you know with uh, 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 Nigel Farage recently call, calling for a second vote, that's that's not outside the realm of possibility, folks. So, you know, re remember remember this the lesson that you can learn from this, and that is, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to go to my next headline. 
and then I'm going to make my point because the next headline drives home the point that I want to make. And hopefully I remember the point after I read this next headline, which is Virginia governor's plans to ban private gun sales defeated for now. So, uh, newly minted powder wig, by the way, powdered wig, I have officially adopted the term. If you were listening to Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander, you will have heard Lou Sander said, you know, when I, when I was talking about if it pleases the crowd, he says, you mean the powdered wig? Because it's not a crowd, it's a powdered wig. And I was like, ha, ah. I resisted, but now I've totally embraced it. So that is, that is the phraseology that you're going to see on iState.tv. More and more, we will be referring to the benevolent leaders of the United States as being uh, a powdered wigs as opposed to the crown. So newly minted powdered wig Governor Ralph Northam saw his first attempt to peel back the benevolence of the Coercive Association of Virginia regarding gun possession. Uh, saw that shot down Monday, January 15th, when his bill that would ban private gun sales was defeated in committee. So it seems that the one powdered wake who wanted to more aggressively deprive human beings of their ability to equip themselves with tools of self-defense was overridden by more benevolent powdered wakes who, for one reason or another, decided that maybe we non-gov peasants should continue to be able to buy and sell tools of self-defense among ourselves. Now, the point that I'm going to make with this is this has been defeated. Great. What's done? We've, 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 we've pushed back the tide and we're all done and freedom has been restored. It's no, no, it's not over. It's never over. The, the, the gun grabbers are never going to surrender. They're never going to stop because this time their bill passed. They'll come back in a week. They'll come back in a month. They'll come back in a year, however long they have to wait. You can be sure that this, uh, this new powdered wig is, is going to make his march, his return back as he attempts once again to end private gun sales in Virginia. And just as with Germany, with, with Britain. So they, they voted and they decided that it's time to leave Brexit. And, and immediately efforts were made to try to undo the vote. My votes, my votes were tried to undo. You know, there's, there's, there, nothing is ever settled. There is no end of history. The battle between coercion and non-coercion is, is never ending. And so long as coercive forces have uh, the power at their disposal to influence their coercive ways on others. They will continue to try. They will never, ever surrender. They will never stop relenting. Our next headline here is Christie pardons two men caged for possessing firearms in New Jersey. And uh, uh, once again, I'm going to incorporate the phrase that uh, Lou Sander gave me on is daily Thursday, uh, the powdered wigs have granted us some more freedoms and that's spelled D U M B S. The powdered wig in question is Chris Christie, the outgoing governor of New Jersey in his powdered wig benevolence. He has decided to pardon two men who have been arrested and found guilty of possessing self-defense tools that the state of New Jersey does not believe you as a non-government in individual should be able to possess New Jersey. Uh, by the way, is is one of only two states that don't allow the simple people to pump their own gas. And I think we know what the other state is. Yeah, it's Oregon. That's right. Uh, just, 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 and I wanted to bring that up just so you know the type of relationship that particular course of association, uh, New Jersey, has with the people that are ostensibly the government. You know, the whole of the people, by the people, for the people mythology of republicanism. So thanks. I want to thank you. Sincerely, from the bottom of my sarcastic laden heart, thank you, Powdered Wig Christie. We appreciate your benevolence in freeing two men who were threatened with death and thrown in cages for possessing tools of self-defense. Your nanny state deemed they were not worthy of possessing. Our next headline, Building Local ISPs to Overcome the Net Neutrality Repeal. And, and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm been writing a lot about this whole, uh, w what's going on with, with, with the fallout from the repeal of net neutrality. And if you go to iState.tv and you do a search for net neutrality, you'll see the stories there. And, uh, I'm focusing on it a lot before net neutrality's repeal, nothing prevented cities and towns from building their own ISP, giving the residents more options 
and protecting them from the predatory nature of ISP monopolies. What's more, these were ISP monopolies created by the very state that the net, net neutrality defenders were still turning to to protect them from the state. So now that net neutrality has been repealed, suddenly localities are working on building their own ISPs to overcome the repeal. Of course, the folks who fought against net neutrality repeal are not bothering to slow down to ask the question, why didn't you do this even while net neutrality existed? And this is from Truth Dig. So Fort Collins, Colorado is planning to build its own internet service utility, trumping the federal communications uh, move uh, Federal Communications Commission's move last month to extinguish net neutrality. Fort Collins joins a growing list of cities uh, opting into their own internet and opting out of big telecom, much to the disdain of giants like Comcast. Hey, I'm all for this. Great. Love it. Totally support this. All told, big telecom and anti-net neutrality agencies spent nearly a million dollars trying to defeat the court Fort Collins move. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a process they had to get to just to get that, that quote-unquote right to be able to do that, and maybe I'll cover that in another story. In contrast, according to Christopher Mitchell, Director of Community Broadband Networks at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, ooh, that sounds interesting. I, I'm interested in checking that out. Don't know anything about it, but uh, it's on my radar now. Concerned citizens of Fort Collins organized on social media and coordinated broadband and brews events at local beer spots, spending a total of about $15,000. Telecom spent an unprecedented amount of money, Mitchell said, but the voters were not scared by the cable and television companies. I can't imagine what your what your hook is there. You know, uh, hey, you you want less freedom? Then it reminds me of a song by uh, Devo, and uh, I'm going to sing it for you. And why not? And the song goes like this. In ancient Rome, there was a poem about a dog who had two bones. He licked the one. He would lick the other. He wanted circles. He dropped dead. Freedom of choice is what we got. Freedom from choice is what we want. That must have been their slogan as they, as they rolled out the advertising to try to convince quote-unquote voters that uh, less choice was good and that that less choice should be left to the powerful telecoms, the monopolies that got their monopolies through state and local regulations. On to the next headline. Amnesty International calls for release of Ahed Tamimi. This is a story that uh, I haven't written much about, but I do want to work. work uh, I, I want to look into this uh, more, and uh, I'm working on an article about this, which I've been working on for a while, and maybe I'll have it out in the next week or so. So this story is from Amnesty International. Israel must release teenage Palestinian activist Ahed Tamimi. Israeli authorities must release a 16-year-old Palestinian activist who could face up to 10 years in prison over an altercation with Israeli soldiers. You just take that in, 10 years in prison. Uh, essentially what she did was uh, she slapped them, but you know, she yelled at them and then she slapped them. And she did that uh, shortly after... They had, well, they'll, they'll, they'll probably describe the story here. Let me get to it. So she'll go before the Ofer military court in the occupied West Bank accused of aggravated assault and 11 other, other charges after a video showing her shoving, slapping, and kicking two Israeli soldiers in, his home, in her home village of, of Nabi Salah on December 15th went viral on Facebook. See, that's the key. It went viral. Made him look really bad. This uh, pretty little girl who, uh, ferocious, uh, pretty little girl who, uh, totally stood up to the soldiers. It really made them look bad. I think that's what's going on here. So uh, from the deputy director of Middle East and North Africa at Amnesty International, Magdalena uh, Murabi, Murabi said, nothing that Ahid Tamini has done can justify the continuing detention of a 16-year-old girl. The Israeli authorities must release her without delay. In capturing an unarmed teenage girl's assault on two armed soldiers wearing protective gear, the footage of this incident shows that she posed no actual threat and that her punishment is blatantly disproportionate. So she was arrested on December 19th along with her brother and cousin, 
uh, also a prominent activist, posted the footage online. I had confronted the soldiers amid a demonstration in Nabi Saleh against U.S. President Donald Trump's recent decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The incident took place on the same day that I had's cousin. See, this is the key. This is a huge mitigating factor here. After her cousin, 15-year-old Mohammed Tamimi, was hit in the head at close range by a rubber bullet fired at, his, at an Israeli soldier. His family told Amnesty International that he required its surgery that involved the removal of part of his left skull. So maybe, maybe you can understand why she was a little bit upset and that would be a mitigating circumstance. But she's still in prison right now. 16-year-old girl for for slapping a heavily armed and heavily protected Israeli soldier. Our next headline, Russians push back against U.S. plans to use Kurds as border guards. Uh, the Russians are warning the U.S. not to go alone in Syria. They want to be part of the process, especially when it comes to how to approach the Kurdish problem. And this excerpt appears to be from a pro-Turkish source, so... You can tell that from the matter-of-fact phrase, U.S. plan to form an army led by the terrorist PKK-PYD. Okay. So still, this agitprop, such as it is, reveals the growing tension surrounding the Kurdish problem. And we actually talked about the Kurdish problem yesterday with Professor Rambo on Is Daily Monday. And there is a link to that show in this story, which you can find on the show notes by going to isheadlines.com. So... From the uh, clearly uh, pro-Turkish, uh, maybe Turkish state uh, run, aa.com.tr. Uh, Russia warns against unilateral U.S. Army plan in Syria. Russia's foreign minister on Monday slammed the U.S. plan to form an army led by the terrorist PKK-PID, warning that it could jeopardize Syria's ter territorial integrity. Speaking at his annual news conference in Moscow, Sergei Lavrov pointed to possible problems that the U.S. plan could cause for Turkey's ties with the Kurds. So now let's go over, there's a couple headlines that we didn't get to here, and that is... We didn't get to U.S. sends warships to South Korea ahead of Winter Olympics. Well, that sounds great. Sounds super. That's, you know, that's this this peaceful gathering. Let's let's send warships to South Korea. That's, that's going to be a great backdrop. Uh, and then we have Putin calls for more regs on cryptocurrencies, as everybody else is well as well. And real quick, here are some of the headlines that didn't make it to the top headlines but are worth pondering. EU ponders how to regulate the Internet of Things. Lawsuit against NY Safe Act to Smith. New Jersey bans gun device used in Las Vegas shooting. Activists push to make MLK's poor people campaign a reality. And there you go. We have run out of time. Okay, we have run out of time once again. This has been, well, it's headlines that you may have missed. I am Paul Gordon with HighStake.tv. And if you're watching on YouTube, this, this video ends right here. If you're watching on Facebook, it continues. So if you're watching on YouTube, be sure you go to isheadlines.com and visit the show notes where you will find the uh, Facebook embedded video, which has a little bit more on it than YouTube. And for both of you, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you go to isheadlines.com and you go to today's show, you will find also an audio version of the show so you can play that as well. So for the YouTube audience, my name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv, and this has been uh, Headlines You May Have Missed for January 16th, 20. 17. Remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news.